Hey you guys, my name is Roberta Peel. I'm owner and artist of Oregon Trail Metal Stamps. Uh, I want to show you guys a kind of neat little trick. Something that I know a lot of you metalsmiths already know. And then there's some new ones who are just getting started and that's what this video is for. Alright, so uh, we're going to talk about annealing metal and the purpose behind it. First of all, I know a lot of times when you get metal in the mail or when you go to the scrapyard, which is what this is from. See how nice that one side's really nice? Our side's really shiny. It's from the scrapyard. Anyhow, it's so hard you can't really bend it. Right? I mean, you can. You can force it, but it's really hard to, to manipulate the metal how you want it to or to do what I do and stamp on it all the time if, you're, uh, if your metal is that hard, okay? Because it doesn't have any give for the metal to compress. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to anneal it. There's a couple different things I'm going to show you. First of all, a piece of copper works just as well on copper as it does on silver. You take like a marker. Take a Sharpie. Put a mark on it. All right, and I'm going to use, this one's kind of a big torch, but I just got done casting, actually. Let's do this. I'm going to take it down a little bit. This is an ambient air torch for those of you who can't afford the, the Smith Little Torch, like me. Uh, it's a great little tool. It's acetylene and air. It just sucks the air right out, or the oxygen right out of the air, as opposed to needing an oxygen tank. It does not get that hard. All right, so this is called an annealing pan. You can use a charcoal block. You can use a fire brick. That's perfectly fine, but keep in mind that your fire brick does not reflect heat back as well as charcoal or an annealing pan with a pumice in it, okay? So these are about 40 bucks on Amazon, and you get them with a neat little third hand if you use third hands. And what you do is you want to toss it in the pan or on your brick or on your charcoal. Right, poor, poor gal's striker here. And then that'll happen. <laughs> okay. Technical difficulties aside. All right, so you don't really need a lot of heat. What you're going to see me do is you're going to watch or see me watch that uh, that mark that I made. Let me zoom in ahead so you guys can see, okay? Hopefully that'll do it. All right, get your quenching water out of the way because it works best when it's cold. And I'm going to go around the outside. This is not full, full on. I'm going to go around the outside, and after a while, and it's best to practice this stuff on copper. After a while, you're going to see that mark disappear, okay? Right around the time that mark disappears completely, see how quick that went? The metal is going to turn red. And did you notice that I went from getting like right up, right up close to it to I back the torch off? I do the same thing when I'm silversmithing and when I'm working with silver and I'm soldering. And I do that because when you get up close like that, it's really going to increase, it's going to make that, a, it's going to maximize the amount of heat that's going into the metal and it's going to continue to heat the metal. Well, to prevent yourself from, uh, don't worry, I ain't going to touch it. It's pissed off at me right now. Anyhow, uh, but in order to maintain that heat for a few seconds, I'll back the torch off so it's not getting as much heat, but it's still staying hot. And when I anneal, that's what I do, is I just back that torch off for just a second after that mark disappears, and then voila, it's good. Then you want to let it set for about a minute, well, not even a minute, just until it turns dark gray and it, it doesn't look so pissed off at you anymore. Give it a little quench. Even just about 10 or 15 seconds is fine. You ready? Watch this. See how nice that is? Of course, as you do this, it's going to do what's called work hardening it. So you can just bend it and play around with it. This, again, it's just a piece of scrap. But you can bend it and play around with it, and you're going to feel how hard that it gets as you go. And then you can just toss it right back in your pan. I should probably get a different striker, huh? Or my striker. Right now, this is just what I have available. Now watch. This time I'm not even going to bother with the mark because I just eyeball it. I wait for it to turn kind of red. Not even bright red. I just want it to glow with just a hair and pink. See how I back it off. And you'll also notice that I'm continuously moving the flame because I want the whole piece to get nice and hot. All right. Let it sit for a second. Then I'm going to show you guys the difference between this kind of metal and uh, this right here is something I'm working on right now. It's a... Uh, an ingot, I know it looks like steel, right? But it's an ingot that I cast out of silver that I'm going to be rolling out into sheet. So let it sit for a couple seconds. Doesn't take long. Quench it. Now it's dead soft again. You can do this as many times as you want, no joke. As many times as you need. So if you're stamping a really complicated piece, and you notice that that metal is getting work hardened because as you compress the metal, it work hardens it. If it gets too hard, it'll become brittle, it'll crack, it'll break, it's bad. 
So anyhow, um, you can do this as many times as you want to. And what's nice about it is, let's say you've got a piece that's deformed like this one right here is now. You can put it on your anvil. Get you a, either one of these. Back it off with hair again. You can get yourself one of these. This is a nylon, kind of like a nylon and rubber hammer. I've got another one that's bigger for 15 bucks at Lowe's. And you get yourself a little bench anvil, a little flat one. And you can hammer it flat, flip it over and hammer it flat again. And then you can re it so your metal's good and soft. All right, this is really handy. Now, uh, another vid in another video, we're going to talk about pickling. Okay, again, I'm focusing on beginners. So I want you to see the difference between how long it took that one and how long it took this one. This one is probably about six gauge, maybe eight or six gauge. And I have, uh, actually, might be slightly less than eight gauge because I just rolled it through the mill. So anyhow, got my kneeling pan. Again, charcoal brick, doesn't matter. And I'm going to fire up the torch. This one right here, I'm not, I don't even really bother with putting a mark on it because it's a big piece and it's silver, so I'm going to keep an eye on the color. Okay. So watch, I usually start around the outside edge with these. And you notice how close that I am with my flame? I just want to really kind of maximize the amount of heat that it's soaking up at first. Just kind of speed it up a little bit. And because this one is so thick, I really have to watch the color. And you really want to watch your edges, especially with this uh, with this hot torch. See, now it's starting to turn a little bit pink, and i got to back my torch away. And I'm just going to kind of back it off and try and hold that heat for just a few seconds. And as I do this, I'm going to explain the science between the, about this, okay? This is a good way to... I'd say that's good enough. This is a good way to remember why you're annealing. If you think about it, you got your water. Okay, what happens when water gets hot? It evaporates. Why? Because heat actually makes molecules in just about everything. It makes the molecules expand. So as the molecules expand, they go up in the air and they become gas. Well, now if you put it into a different perspective, you know, if we're talking about metal here, what your heat does is it makes your molecules expand and if you let it sit for a second and then you quench it, and again, I let my, this big piece is going to sit for a second as I explain this to you. But as soon as you, uh, as soon as you quench it, the molecules are going to contract back in, but they're not going to be so tightly bound. Okay, that's called being. That's called uh, be, like if you find like hard metal, if you buy some metal that's hard, uh, hard wire, um, spring hard silver, copper, what have you. Um, those molecules have been condensed, whether it's been through work, which has usually been rolled through uh, a mill or a press, um, or you'll buy it dead soft, which means that it's been it's gone through a treatment that allowed it to allowed the molecules to expand, and that's usually going to be via heat because with metal, there's very few other ways to do that that I'm aware of. If I'm wrong, correct me. All right, so that's been sitting here for a little while. She's still pissed off at me. See. Told you. We're gonna soak her for just a second. Yeah, she's good enough. Alright. Now with this nice thick sheet here, you're gonna find you're not gonna be able to bend it. Not 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 uh, not unless you've annealed it a couple times over and even then it's still iffy. Silver is pretty this is a pretty dense piece of silver. Um, but all I'm gonna do is just clean it off, run it through my rolling mill, and then I'll probably pattern it and then Play around. I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet. I usually don't until usually don't until I get going. Anyhow, I hope that that helped a, a lot of you noobs out. And uh, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. If any of you more experienced Smiths have watched this and said, you know, there's a better way to explain this or there's a different way to do it, please feel free to share. That's what our community is about. So uh, again, I hope you all enjoyed it and you have a great night. Bye.